Today we're going to work on the PTO of the Cub Lowboy. Now I'm going to start out by saying this particular PTO is actually a combination of two PTO parts and pieces that I put together uh, to make one go and it's starting to slip. In fact, it is starting to slip when you rototill. Uh, you, you have to kind of hold up on this handle back here. If you hold up on it, it gives it just a little bit more tension and it'll work. But it needs replaced. It's not going to last very long. Let's get to it. Now, when dealing with the PTO clutch, it's actually cheaper just to rebuild it. And it's really not that complicated to rebuild it. But because mine has so many different parts and pieces in it, I just chose to buy a new one. You can buy these at Hamilton Bob's. He carries them. Uh, they're a little bit pricey. But in my circumstance, I felt it was just better to have everything new since it's a bunch of kind of parts and pieces put together. It's really not difficult to swap this unit out. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of know-how. So the first thing you need to do is unbolt the four bolts that hold the seat down and get your fenders unbolted. You should be able to lift all of this out of the way after we do that. If you have a three point like I do, you're gonna to have to remove this shaft here. It's not a big deal. It's only held on by four bolts on each side. You wanna pull the pin on the cylinder and uh, it should just pull right off. Not that big of a deal, but something you'll have to do. There's a couple of bolts you're gonna to have to remove. The one right here on this linkage piece. You remove that bolt, which will make it easier to get out. You need to remove this bolt as well. Once you get those released, there are three more bolts on this bracket, and it just makes it easier to remove the whole bracket. It's a bolt here, a bolt here, and there's a bolt right there. So you get those three bolts off, and uh, the two bolts over here, and everything should just pull straight back with very little effort. Now that all the bolts are removed, it will just pull straight back. Now you kind of have to fight it because there's different linkages and stuff that get caught down in here. Uh, like that one right there. And now all these little plates are getting caught on that little gadget there. You probably could have removed it. I lost some camera footage there, but basically I had to hold these, these rings up to clear that little bracket under there. If you took the little bracket off, it probably would have came out much easier, but you don't have to. It just takes a couple of hands. Now from this point, it doesn't get any easier. Just pull the flange bolts off and get this piece out of here. Bolt your new one back in place, and then we'll go put it back on the tractor. Now probably the most difficult part of this procedure is putting this back together because you have to painstakingly line up each one of these plates as you shove it back in. It's not too difficult, you just gotta get your hands dirty and basically line them up one at a time and kind of bump it in and get to the next ring and line it up and bump it in and, and eventually you get all four plates in and she'll just glide right together like there's no issue. Now something to make note of, this flange here, it's actually part of the bearing. It goes all the way through. It has a couple of Allen bolts on it and it's a lock ring because nothing really holds the shaft from pulling straight out except for this lock ring. And so you need to make sure it's tight. Now on the other clutch assembly, this was actually on the inside. They shipped this with this on the outside. I don't see any reason why it's going to be any issue on the outside, and that's probably where the factory has it, but it does make getting to this bolt a whole lot easier, so I'm just going to leave it. And remember, before you fire this up, you're also going to want to put some grease in the Zerk fitting right there. Now would probably be a good time to do that before you put everything else back on top. Pretty much that's all there is to it. Just Put everything else back together the way you took it apart and from this point just give it a good test it should work just like the tractor was new and it'll give you many years of service 